Hello and welcome to Monkey's Paper Palooza Craft Corner. So today we are going to finish up our series on the My Monthly Kit for June 2018 by finishing up with four cards. So for the first card, I'm going to take my Distress Oxides in the Worn Lipstick, the Fired Brick, and I believe it is the Spiced Marmalade. And I'm going to start on this panel by first drawing a horizon line. That way I know where I want to put my sunset. So I'm going to get that all in there. And you see how beautiful this orange is. You can see this one's going to be very vibrant and pretty. So I did a little area of the spice marmalade. And now I'm coming in with a worn lipstick. And I'm just going to surround that area and kind of blend it in. and blended and then I'm going to top it off with some of the fire brick I'm trying to make myself a beautiful very pink and red and orange sunset top of this panel I'm really I'm not too concerned about the ends of this panel because I am going to end up die cutting this out to make a cameo circle um, for my card so really the outside layers are not going to be a problem now I'm going to do my water in Potter's Clay, Rosebud, and the Rhubarb Stock in Memento Ink. I wanted to go in the reds this time to show that you did not have to do blue. You don't always have to make your water blue. In the last video you saw me do it in purples and multiple color shades of blue, blacks, navies. Have fun with it because sometimes with the way the sky is lit up, your water can be different colors. It can look red, it can look pink, it can look orangey, it can look almost midnight blue. It can also look sometimes very light and crisp and light blues too. So have fun with this kit. I mean, you do not have to stick to the three blue colors, you can go have fun with it. And that's why I'm doing this in this way for this. Because I want to show you can use whatever color you want for your water. And it's still just as beautiful. So the last color I'm putting on here is the Potter's Clay. Just making sure I get a good layer of this Potter's Clay on there. And I'm not worrying about the bottom of this card. Because like I said, it's going to get die cut. So now I'm going to just add some wisps of clouds over the sunset. And I'm going to actually do those in the soft granite that came in the kit. Oops, my stuff moved a little bit. And I just am putting these wisps of cloud in there. I'm getting a good layer. Some of it's not stamping very well. Let me just make sure we're straight. I had a lot of fun with this kit because it has these beautiful silhouettes and the layering was gorgeous. And also got a glimpse yesterday of the new kit coming out for July and it's very fun. If you haven't got to see it, it's a carnival theme, which is really fun for this time of year. Now I just went over with some unicorn white from Hero Arts just to give those clouds a little whiteness. And I am going to add a little sailboat here in the middle, doing that in the tuxedo black. I hope you guys enjoyed having these videos in a series of three versus being all rushed into two or one. It just, it seems more relaxed, I feel. And after all, these kids are really fun. You can make a lot with them. So I just think that worked out a lot better. So I'm taking my oval stitch die from Cottage Cuts and I'm just cutting a little oval and I noticed I had a little spot that didn't show so I'm just going to touch up with a little bit of the potter's clay and I'm just then going to rub, rub over it with my sponge just to make it soft. Now I did realize I forgot to put my birds in and I did want to put those birds in the clouds and I forgot. But look at how beautiful this cameo is. Isn't, isn't it gorgeous? It's going to be very pretty when I put it on this black cardstock card form. 
So I'm going to flip over my mat because I did get some of that unicorn white on my back of my mat. And I don't want it to contaminate my little insert here. So I'm coming in here and I'm putting it in the rhubarb stock. Greetings from my happy place. So I'm going to just add some tape runner to the back of this. And there we go. And now I'm going to take my smaller um, die and cut in the craft foam my little craft foam oval to go behind it. I had someone ask the other day if this craft foam is acid free and craft safe. It is EVA foam. EVA foam is a craft foam. It is indeed part of an acetate in the acetate family, so it is absolutely archival and acid free. I had to look that up myself just to make sure, but I was like, yes it is. Most craft stuff now you get at the store, they're gonna be archival safe. Most stuff. I mean I haven't seen many things that are not acid free. So you're pretty much have a guarantee that you're gonna have something that's good. Especially if you buy it from a craft store. Cause they know crafters want something that's gonna last. And now I am adding some of the beautiful little red Aurora Borealis pearls I just added to the shop. I felt they were the perfect color to match the background on this cameo. And I'm just going to add them there. And there we go. Isn't that really pretty? Very simple, but yet very classy. And I'll show that a little closer. Just like reds and oranges in those pearls. Now for card number two, I'm going to spritz some cardstock with that sea foam glitter spray that came in the kit. This is really fun to use, but I'm going to say it's extremely messy. It, I literally have to wash my counter like three or four times after I use it. And now I'm going to make a beautiful little sandy scene. So I'm going to start up with my brush corduroy and my Distress ink. And I'm just going to move it down and make almost a sandy blended background. The most of this card is going to be this sand. And I'm just going to try a little something a little different. And I'm going to tell you, it worked for a little bit and then it didn't work. So I'm just going to warn you ahead of time and tell you what I ended up having to do. Because what I hoped it would do, didn't do. Sometimes when we make something, we think, oh, it's going to work. This will work so good. And it doesn't work. And it was fine. I was able to improvise and save it. But sometimes it just happens to the best of us. I usually plan my cards out ahead of time. A lot of people say, how do you do this? I, I literally have like a grid that I just lay it out on the grid. And then sometimes I tweak it. Sometimes I don't. And this is when I thought I'd tweak. And it didn't tweak well. <laughs> but. It still worked out. And like I did before in the last video, I said I'm not too concerned when I'm doing sandy areas about how perfect it is. Because sand has all kinds of shadows in it and dips and things in it. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be uniform. Now I'm coming in with the our Deep Ocean ink and putting the bottom layer of my stamp. And like I did before, I'm saying reverse stamp is so much easier. It really is because it covers up any mistake you make a lot easier lining up. And it also blends your colors better. We did a lot of discussion in this video about why I like doing it that way. It saves you a lot of goof. I'm going to use my grid to straighten this out a little bit. Because I noticed, for some reason, it's picking up everything. And I think it was because I only had one magnet, but then again, I did it again and I did it again. And sometimes it doesn't pick up my stamp. Like it's not doing today, apparently. I don't know if my stamp was dirty there or if it was just not clinging right. 
All right, so now I'm coming in, and oops, there, I made a mistake there. Luckily, I caught myself. I am now trying to do the soft sky. And the color I did previous was the summer sky that did come in the kit. It's a little bit, which is fine. And I think you see what I'm trying to do with this card already, because we got water and we got sand. And I'm just going to do another layer of the soft sky just to make sure it's well blended. Or maybe another layer. There we go. I think that was all the layers I'm going to do on this. And I'm going to take this Hello stamp and I'm going to put it in the center. And I'm going to use my Rich Cocoa to do that. I had been doing it with the embossing powder document, but I find that sometimes it blends into the brush corduroy a little too much and it's hard to read. So I, this time I said, no, nope, let's just do this in the Rich Cocoa so it really stands out. So now I'm going to add my little sandy feet here, my little footsteps. I'm going to cross this card in the same Rich Cocoa. Try to line them up so they don't hit that hello. Okay, so the next kit's a carnival theme. Um, there's some really fun things that you can do with it. They also have some more of their water reactive inks in it, which it might be kind of interesting. Last time I used it, I felt that it worked okay. Um, I felt that it was very much like the Distress Oxides in texture. I also think it was my paper too that wasn't working well with it. So I'm hoping with this new paper, the new Canson paper I have, it's going to work a lot better. Now, here's where I got a little bit crazy. I was going to try to put my multi medium and leave my embossing powder kind of raw, almost like sand. And it did not quite work out like I wanted to. I mean, it stuck for a little bit and then it started flaking off. So I'm going to start by doing it that way. So I just put it on my fingers and just brushed it on there. It was fun but a little bit messy. And I wanted to do the multimedia matte because I figured it would get a matte finish and it wouldn't shine. But it was working good for a little while and then it just kind of started to brush off. And I was like, that's not going to work for me. This is a car that's going to go through the mail, possibly, and I don't want it brushing off all over the place. So while I let that dry, I'm going to add in Life is Better with Sandy Feet. I believe I am doing that also in the Rich Cocoa. I'll get that out of the side. Now... I did end up heat setting my embossing paste after because it was just flaking off everywhere. So after I did that paper and I let it dry, I cut out the little seashells and the starfish and I'm going to adhere them. And like I had in the past when I used my two-way glue, it just, they were not sitting straight and not drying fast enough. So I end up using my ink cubes as weights and it works out really good. It holds them down just enough to let that glue stick them but not weighing it down too much that's flattening them. Sometimes you got to use what you got in your craft room. And I'm going to let that sit for a little bit while I get my craft foam ready. I really thought this card was a little bit fun because it was a little bit more freestyle versus more kind of uniform and controlled. So I get lots of adhesive on that and let's put that craft foam on it. and I'll get that onto the panel and I just put it on a craft card form just to keep that browns going on in there and there we go isn't that adorable very simple but very shiny and shimmery very sandy I love it 
So for car number three, I wanted to use the sympathy part. I hadn't used that yet in my cards. A lot of my cards for this were very upbeat, and I decided I want to make this a little bit more of a somber but yet beautiful card. So I'm going to start by printing my clouds out on, stamping my clouds out on some white cardstock, and I'm going to use that soft granite that came in the kit once again. And I am doing the traditional stamping. I know you're saying, wait a minute, you're doing this in traditional. It's fine. Um, I'm going to die cut these out, and I'm going to do a little something with them at the end, too that I'm not too concerned about how straight it's going to be. So I got those stamped and now I'm going to come in with my embossing ink and I'm going to lay that out top. And of course I'm going to add my white snow embossing powder by Recollections. And heat set that. And I am going to indeed die cut those out into their forms. And at first I liked them with the white and I changed my mind later on. And you'll see what I changed my mind to in a little bit. But first let's work on our panel. Now I wanted to do it in the wavy kind of stormy look to it. So I'm going to put my stamp going the opposite direction. No horizon line on this one. Just pure waves. So I'm stamping the first in the deep ocean. Then I'm going to come on in with the summer sky. Make sure I had a position that's magnet in the right place just so it doesn't stick. And it's still dead. Like I said, my stamps, I just, I don't know why. They just love sticking to my paper. I think it's my weight in my paper. I have a very lightweight paper I've been using lately, and I think it just sticks to it really well. Because I tried doing it lightly, and I've tried doing it not so lightly, and it still sticks. But that's why we have a stamp positioner for. Reposition and go. So now I'm going to add um, my last color, which will be the soft sky. Oops, my stamp was not stuck all the way. And like I said, you see, you get those beautiful waves. And this stuff, that's all right. We'll try this again. That's why they make grids on these. <laughs> and rulers, so you can put them back on the ruler where you had it. Of course, it helps if you pay attention to where you put it. So there, I feel like that should be good enough. Now, I am going to end up making a mask for this because I don't want my water to be contaminated by my sky. So I'm going to get this in there, make sure I'm lined up, and I am. I thought maybe I could get a second generation print, but it's already dried, so we're going to do this again. And I'm just going to touch it up with some of the summer, the deep ocean. It doesn't matter how good it's stamped, it's just for the outline. So after I fussy cut that out, which actually is kind of fun too. I like, kind of like that design there. I came in with my Distress Oxides. And I'm using the Ice Spruce for the base layer. And then I'm going to go in with the Broken China. And then, of course, I'm going to top it off again with a little bit more Ice Spruce. Like I said, this was going to be a stormy sky. So I didn't want it to be as bright and happy as my previous cards. So that's why I went back in with a little bit more ice spruce, just to soften it. You just see how pretty that is. I'm just going to touch it up on the bottom there just to smooth it out. A little bit of ice spruce on top of that. So now I'm going to stick this back in my Stamp Perfect. Try and line it up. 
And I'm going to put my little sailboat in there again. A little off center on a wave. And instead of doing it in black, I'm going to do this one in red. I wanted to stand out because I figured the black would be too somber and too gray, but I wanted a little pop of color in this card. So I decided to do it red. And I was laying out my clouds, and then I realized, and this is my moment, I really don't like how white they are. <laughs> um, this is supposed to be a stormy sky. So after I put my birds in there, and I'm doing those in the soft granite also because they're in the clouds, in the mist, so they wouldn't be as dark. I decided to change it. So before I do my little editing to my things, I'm also going to put in the, the card form Thinking of You in the Paris Dusk. And I'm also going to, while I have this out, I'm going to do my With Sympathy. And I'm doing that on some black cardstock. And I'm going to heat, get it ready for heat setting by putting it through with some anti static tool. And I'm going to use my Hero Arts silver embossing powder for this. It's a very beautiful, shiny color, but very clean and simple. And I love that it's detailed. So I'm going to heat set that, cut it down. And then cut it down with a little swoosh. I ran out of blue, so I'm going to pull up purple. But luckily, I don't think it's going to matter. It's not going to show on this card. There we go. So far, there's our card. So I'm going to put this on my card form before I do any of my other embellishments. That way, I don't have any warping. That alone is a beautiful card. But like I said, now the whiteness of these were driving me by bonkers. So I took my ice spruce once again, and I'm going to go around the edges of these clouds. So now you see exactly what I said when I was going to fix that. Because I felt they were just too white. And this is a stormy scene, so they should be dark. So now I'm going to put some uh, Scotch adhesive foam squares behind there. Just to pop up these clouds. So I'm going to adhere that to them. I'm also going to add a link to my playlist for you guys um always check out my playlists i often put other creators cards also on there so that way you have other options should you say eh, this is not kind of what i want to build but also give you more inspiration to use your kit because i know you got this kit and you're like what can i make with this i do the same thing i look at other people for inspiration and i adapt it to whatever i want to do with mine and for what my abilities are. Sometimes I am a learner at these pro at these techniques myself, so. So definitely check out playlists. They do help you out. And I'll definitely put a link for that up above, so definitely check that out. So I'm also gonna put um, craft foam squares behind the sentiment also, just to raise it up. And I'm gonna keep this very simple. This is it. I'm not doing any funky embellishments. It's a very somber, clean, simple card. Isn't that very pretty? All right, so the last card is going to be a little bit of an inspiration from Jennifer McGuire. So you're going to cut a 8.5 by 11 sheet in half, so 5.5, and, and then you're going to seam your first piece at 4 and a quarter, and you're going to cut a half inch off back point just to give you a little bit of an easier full point. For your second piece, you're going to score at a half, a four and a quarter, and three and a quarter.
Now you're going to put your window in this card, um, and you're going to put it between those two little thin panels. And that will make your little window for your shadow box card. Now this is a really fun technique. And when I saw her do it, I was like, oh my god, this is so much fun. I need to share this myself. And I do think I have that also in my playlist, too, if you need to look at it more. She gave some beautiful ideas of even how to use the add-ons. All right, so for my inside panel that's going to go inside the little shadow box area, I'm just going to trace out where I cut so that way I know what's going to be in the window. I don't really worry about it going over the spot because you're going to see around it too. But I just wanted to make sure my focal point for the main parts of my scene were in that square. So quickly, I am going to re washi tape my magnets because they seem to be disintegrating. And it's very important to make sure those are set to go. And washi tape on it makes them eat it easier to grab them and pull them off, I find. So I'm going to put some little red chairs in on this panel. So I'm doing that in the rhubarb stock. So I'm getting a good coat on these. And then I'm going to go over it with my emboss it. And I'm going to emboss these chairs. Because when I do my water in my background, I don't want it to contaminate. And that's a great way. If you have something that's like this, that has panels, and you don't want to mask it, which sometimes, like, images like this, it's hard to mask because you want the image to go behind the slats of the chair. And if you do it, you're going to get, like, a shadow. And it's not going to be as kind of clean as you want it. So I find sometimes going over it with some clear embossing powder will actually correct that. So you can actually just wipe off the image. Of course, you got to make sure you get a good coat of this embossing powder, and you will see that. Uh, in one of the items I do that it didn't. It's no biggie. It's fine. But it does help when you make sure you get a good coat. So both my chairs are now coated with my clear embossing powder from Recollections. And I'm going to now put my cloud. But I am flipping my cloud backwards. So that I get a big rounded area because the outline of that stamp is a lot bigger than the cloud itself. And what I'm going to do is I'm making myself some little islands. And that's another thing I learned from Jennifer McGuire. I never knew you could flip your stamp over and get a nice little shape like that. And that one I'm going to go over clear embossed powder. And that's the one I kind of goofed and I guess didn't get a good coat on. So I'm going to do the same thing a second time. I'm going to line that up and do that soft granite again. And I'm going to coat that with my embossing powder. So I'm get embossing ink on there first. But like I said, this is a great, great way if you want something to be behind something and you don't want to mask it to get the same effect. Because the ink will resist your embossed area naturally. So you can just wipe it off. But that's, like I said, if you get a good embossed area. So I'm going to start with my first layer of my water. And for this one, I'm only going to be using two layers. I'm not going to use the final layer on this because I felt like it was going to go too far down. And stamp across that. But you see, this image is going to go behind those chairs, which is really fun. And you can just wipe it off. Like that one I said didn't wipe off as well because I didn't get the embossing powder on there as well. But if I had a, had a nice coat on that, it would have wiped right off. No biggie. It won't make that much of a difference. It actually almost gives it the island some dimension, like one's behind the other one. And there's my second layer. 
and that one I'm doing in the Bahama blue. And now I'm going to just go over it with the soft sky just to give it those white areas a little bit more fill. I didn't want, like I said, the one to go too far because I wanted it to look like they're on the edge of the water, not in the water. And now I'm going to come in with my summer sky and I'm going to make the sky on top. And I'm just blending it in. I do say um, Hero Arts inks do blend beautifully. They honestly do. They blend, I think, a little bit like the Distress inks. They're very juicy. So I think they actually blend better than they stamp sometimes. Though I have to say this one wasn't as bad. I think they stamped really well with this um, layering stamp. Sometimes they kind of make it kind of run a little bit. I think this one being that it's water and it's more fluid, it doesn't matter if it runs and spreads a little bit. But sometimes the pristine images don't stamp as well with them. All right, so now coming in with my brushed corduroy. You saw me use a lot of this for the sand. It's just a perfect color. It's not too dark, but it's not too light. It's just the perfect sand color. And I am blending it a little bit into the water so that it looks like we're on the edge of the water, not in the water. And I'm going to stamp my birds in there. And those are in tuxedo ink, tuxedo black ink. And I'm going to go over this water just a little bit more on this corner where the sand touches it, just to give it a little bit more layer. So now I'm also adding the palm tree. Now for the first one, you see it wiped right off. And the second one, not so much, but that's fine. There's different dimensions of ink, it's fine. It actually gave the eyelid a little bit more, it looked like one was more on front and had waves on it, it's fine. And now I'm gonna put my little sandy feet in my rich cocoa. And now I'm coming in with just wisps of clouds in the unicorn white ink. And I'm not being too concerned about how uniform they are. They're just wisps. It doesn't have to be fancy. So for my front panel, my front card piece, I'm going to just add a simple kind of graphic image because we want the, the detail to be inside the card, not on the outside. So don't worry about making this elaborate. Just have fun with it. Just make it simple. I decided to do my two palm trees. And then put my little sentiment in front. I feel like the shadow box card was really fun. It takes a little bit of trial and error to get your folds just right and everything. But once you get it, it's like really fun. And it's quick and simple, really, actually. It wasn't as complicated as I thought it was going to be. I was like, ooh, but it really went fast. So I'm going to stamp out two red chairs once again on some card stock, and I'm going to die cut these out, and I'm going to adhere them to the front in front of those palm trees. I get this foam tape on the top of it. In her video, um, she just stamped a bunch of images on there. I decided to get a little bit three dimensional, and I did notice I cut some blue ink on the front, and I'm gonna have to fix that is fine that's what we have embellishments for and I also noticed I made the panel too long so I cut it down so it fits in perfectly and I'm going to line it right up against that card edge inside 
that way because you're going to see more of that side than you're going to see at the inside part. So the first thing is you're going to take that little half inch section and you're going to put some adhesive on it. She used score tape for hers. I honestly don't have any, so I'm just going to use my adhesive roller. I feel it's just as strong. And then you're going to take your back panel and you're going to adhere it as much as you can. Just get a bunch of adhesive down. And then you're going to fold at the four and one quarter area. And I'm going to suggest too that you pre fold your creases. I didn't, I had to fix them quickly. But that's it. And when you open it up, you get that beautiful seam. Isn't that pretty? You can even put a little sentiment on the frame inside or more embellishments if you want. Maybe even some pop up effects. She did a bunch of them on her thing. So definitely check out my playlist again. If you didn't get the link, you can always go through it through my channel too. I have them on my channel. So to cover up my little blue splotches that apparently was on my fingers, I'm just gonna add some of my rainbow Aurora Borealis pearls. These I'm currently out of the four millimeter in. I do have a batch of three millimeter in process right now. I made a goof in ordering. I ordered the wrong size. <laughs> so the four millimeter is on its way, but right now we have three millimeter in the rainbow. And of course, a bunch of different colors in the four millimeter. So definitely check that out. So just to balance it a little bit more, I'm going to add some more on the side, as well as add one on top of there, just to balance it. And there we go. Isn't that fun? So thank you for watching. If you liked this video, please check our, our last video that was uploaded as well as one specially curated for you. And like always, click the subscribe button and you can subscribe, click for notifications, etc. And check out our website where you can sign up for our newsletter and crafty sales emails.